Hey there guys, Mike here again. Thanks for clicking the video. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Uh, today's video is not really a Land Cruiser video, more of an automotive video. I'm going to show you how to take these simple items here. So an OLED screen, uh, Arduino nano board, and a temperature sensor and how to make your own DIY engine temp sensor. It's really easy, really cool, and it's quite accurate as well. So I'll show you how to go about doing that. And so you could try something like this for yourself as well. As some of you might know, I recently built the engine of my Land Cruiser here and the gauges that come in these sort of Land cruisers is pretty much lacking it's pretty much an idiot stick that tells you it's hold or it's caught and you really don't know what the temperature is um, since I spent a lot of money and effort into this engine I want to make sure that it lasts and this is about $30 worth of stuff and we're going to build a kind of a modern digital gauge for this I'm just at my workstation here and we'll go through all the layout and equipment that I used to put this temperature sensor together. I'll also include a wiring layout and the coating and I'll link that below so you can just cut and paste that and you can copy exactly what I did. So the heart of the gauge is this uh, digital temperature sensor. So this is waterproof. It has uh, three wires, a ground, a uh, voltage, and a signal wire. And this is three meters long and it should fit into most vehicles. I'm also using this Nano for the production version. Uh, it's quite small, compact, and they're really inexpensive and it should fit in the gauge no problem. And I'm also using this OLED uh, screen. So this is a 1.3 inch screen. Um, I'm gonna be using a white one and that should look good in the gauges. The neat thing about these OLED screens is you can see them from any angle and they don't change, so that's really good. If you can't find one of these screens, you could also go with these types of LCD screens. Um, they, they are all right, but they take up a lot of real estate and they're hard to see on certain angles and stuff like that. But this will work as well. So this is the prototype layout I have here. Um, I got it all done on a little breadboard here. Um, again, this is just the 1.3 inch uh, OLED screen. I'm using the Uno and I like the Uno because it has these standoffs here and you can do prototyping really easy. In the program, I put a little idiot light here and this will um, go on when the temperature is over 95 degrees and you can set that to whatever you want. The one thing I like to point out about this uh, sender is that it's gonna need a pull-up resistor. So I have a 4.7K ohm a pull-up resistor and what that helps to doing is when the signal comes through this long wire it's quite weak and this will actually help enhance the signal so the Arduino board can actually read it. Let's go ahead and take this prototype mess and we'll mount it temporarily and see how it actually operates. So what I think I'll do is I'll put it in the center there and I'll run the feed wire out the window and through the hood and then we'll attach it to a part of the cooling system. Okay, so we'll just roll down this window a little bit and we'll feed the wire through and then to the hood. So this is part of the dilemma. This is the sender here that actually goes to the instrument cluster in the dash and that gauge is known to be a little bit flaky and the sender can be a little bit flaky. But the good thing about it is it's underneath the thermostat so you always know what the engine operating temperature is. And realistically, there is no other real good place to put a temperature sender in these 12 HTs. What some people do is they'll actually splice the hose and put a little a cup layer adapter in here and stick a sender right in here. But that's not ideal as well because it only really senses when the thermostat is open. So you don't get a true reading of what the engine is doing. So if the thermostat were to jam, uh, you really don't know if the engine's overheating or not. So with this probe here, I have a couple options. What I could do is I could crimp on a little bolt connector and stick it on one of the studs on the thermostat right there. That would work. Um, what I'm planning to do here for test purposes is actually stick it on this little tube here. So this tube here is the hot water that goes to the, the heater inside and it always has hot water flowing through it as long as the valve is open. So what I plan on doing is just using this pipe clamp and holding the metal right against that and that should give a pretty good uh, indication how hot the engine is getting. Yes, it's not in water, but I know that the thermostat opens up about 88 degrees. So if there's an event change, then I know roughly where we're at. So we'll just finish up the install here. And so what I did here is I mounted the sensor right on the metal portion of the exit to the heater core. As long as there's water going through there, there is a pretty accurate temperature and I just got it temporary there. So let's go button this all up and take this little burn and see how it works. So we're ready to give it a shot here. So we've got my prototype board. The Arduino runs on five volts. So my Land Cruiser here is 24 volts, so I can't charge it through the cigarette light or anything like that. So what I have here 
is uh, a cell phone charger, a device charger, and this is five volts, so it plugs in properly there. This should run about an hour. I eventually will plan to do a proper power supply, so a 24 volt to a five volt power supply and have that run on that. And what I also plan to do is maybe make a little uh, pod right here for it. So right now the engine temperature is at 18.1 degrees Celsius, and I, that's pretty much the ambient outside temperature. This gauge here is actually what the coolant temperature is, and you can actually see it when the thermostat opens and closes. It will go up past halfway and then come down again, but it doesn't really tell you how hot anything is. So what I'll do is I'll watch that, and I'll watch this, and as I mentioned, the thermostat opens up at about 88 degrees. So I'll figure out roughly what um, this actually reads when the thermostat opens and kind of do a calculation factor to see how hot the engine actually is. I'm just around the corner from my house now and I can see the temperature slowly rising. So 23, 23.1. So we'll see how when that climbs, this should start climbing quite as well. So, so the gauge is just coming up to the white portion there. And this is reading 35 degrees. Just got back home here for a quick little trip around the block. Um, I never really got up to really hot temperature. Uh, it takes a bit with this diesel, but I did seem to max out at uh, 57. So it's actually sitting there getting warmer as we're parked. So when you're idling at stop signs, the heat goes up quite a bit. And as if you're just no driving around normal, there's enough wind in the fan and everything will go and the temperature actually goes down a bit. Well, I'm back in my shop here and see if I can fabricate a permanent solution for that gauge. My gauges that I have right now are this autometer style and there's a two inch diameter. So I'm going to see if I can actually replicate something like this uh, with some aluminum extrusions. So I'll just go through some of the material that I have. So I have this two inch aluminum round and that will fit this screen perfectly. In that we'll put a little mounting plate so they've got some black ABS and we'll cut that out and that will fit perfectly and mount that on there. This is the nano that we plan to use and it will fit nicely in here so that's all nice size so we'll mount that right into the gauge. I also have this retainer here and that will hold the the gauge into the face plate and what I also have is this piece and I'm going to be making the bezel so this gauge has this bezel here, so we'll be going to fabricate that bezel and that will retain this uh, plexiglass, which will be uh, kind of a smudge and dust protector for that. So have all the pieces ready to go and let's go start fabricating them. So I don't want to make this video too long. I'm going to breeze through this housing and I'm just going to quickly fabricate it up and show you the final product. If you do want to see an extended video on how I built that gauge, please leave a comment below and I can do a separate video just that alone. So I'll make this gauge. I'll rehome that whole uh, temperature gauge in it. We'll put it back in the vehicle and I'll show you the finished product. So all the fabrication work is done um, and I also painted the aluminum here. So this is the body of it and then this is the backing of it and that will go on the, the back here and then these bolts here will retain the cap for that so it will hold it into this. So I made this as well and that matches perfectly in there and I just made that out of some 18 gauge metal and now I have a face plate and that will fit perfectly like that the clear plexiglass and that perfectly fits in this bezel here and this bezel was a chore to make <laughs> I won't uh, I won't kid you that this is probably the hardest thing to make out about the whole gauge it uh, it came from this and then it went from <laughs> Uh, this and then this turned into that um, that's what I had in stock to make this bezel and what I did was I actually sandblasted the finish here to kind of give it a textured look to it and that turned out pretty good another thing I should probably mention is I'm using these really uh, fancy machine screws these are kind of hard to find these are two by 56 so I have um, the machine screws Phillips head screws and then the nuts as well and I went ahead and painted them black because they will sit in that as well so that should all match nicely nicely so let's go ahead and assemble the gauge let's do 
doing a final assembly here and I ended up just soldering all the wires directly to the terminals. You can see that and I, I soldered directly the 4.7k pull up resistor directly from the D2 pin right to the 5 volt pin and down my wire connections there so that's directly soldered and then I have a wire coming out the back. This will come out the back of the gauge and I'll do quick connectors for the temperature probe sensor that I pulled through the firewall. The only other thing I need to do is to trim this cable a little bit. So this uh, USB cable is a little bit too long and it wouldn't fit in the housing properly. So I just trimmed that back a bit. And basically when I put it in there, it will just sit crossway like that in the gauge. And I also have some heat shrink here, which I'll slide in over top of that. And I'll heat the heat shrink that so that won't vibrate loose. And it'll protect all the terminals. Let's plug it in. No, it is not flashing. That's just the camera the way it is. So that turned out pretty good. And then here is an original auto meter type of gauge as well. So I think it's a pretty good match. All right, so let's go put it into the vehicle. So here we are gonna start feeding the wire through the permanent insulation. So we're gonna take the, the temperature sender wire and we're gonna run it through the firewall on the driver side. And so what I typically do is um, I take a piece of welding wire and push it through and then I took some tape, I apply it all together and we just pull it through. Well, that was pretty easy. Sometimes it's a struggle getting wires through the firewall. So now we'll put this in place and we'll route the wire through, we'll zap strap it all together, push it through the firewall some more and take up all the slack on the other side. The temperature sensor wire is all installed and I routed it nicely through to the side here and then out into the firewall. So that was pretty easy, no problem. So here it is, all installed. I think it matches and turned out pretty good. Um, it's not flashing, it's just the way the shutter speed is of the camera. And the neat thing about it is, is that before you start it up, it actually will show you the ambient temperature of the, the engine. So right now it's only 14.6 degrees outside. Another angle of that. Well, the gauge install and the way it was all fabricated turned out pretty good. I'm really happy with it. Um, some things to note, if you have a 12 volt vehicle, you could use something like this. You could just uh, plug it into your cigarette lighter and run the Arduino into that or hack into this and mount it under the dash. Some future modifications I was thinking about doing to this gauge is either moving the LED light into the dash so you can see it while you're driving if you're not paying attention to the gauge or substitute the light for a five volt to low amperage um, buzzer. So when it reaches your threshold, whatever you set, it will buzzer and you can pay attention to see what's happening. I really like some of you don't like code. So if you want to check out in the video now, you can. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. If not, continue watching. I'll go through the layout and the code and how it all works. So here is the program I wrote for this temp gauge. Um, it's kind of basic program. I didn't get too complicated so you guys can follow along here. Um, the first thing I should note is make sure that you're using the right library file for your OLED screen. Um, there's different types of files and different types of screens so you just want to make sure that matches and you want to make sure that screen is an I2C screen so it works good. The wire for the signal for the temp gauge is on the D2 pin and when you come down it initializes everything. And then it also, here is the temporary threshold. I have it set at 95 degrees Celsius. And this could also be a buzzer if you want. Just make sure if you use a buzzer that it doesn't exceed the capacity of the Arduino board. And then the LED pin is on the D11 pin and that can also be a buzzer as well. So it goes through the initial setup. It reads the initial uh, temperature and then it displays it on the screen and then it comes down to the loop. So this keeps on going through the loop, loop, loop. This is what uh, it reads the sensor and then it displays, reads the sensor and displays. And once it displays, I have everything here on the Celsius. So I have it all set up Celsius. If you don't want Celsius, you want Fahrenheit, just remove all these double lines here and put double lines in front of here and it should all work out to be the same. And now the other thing I've added was a little bar graph. So under the actual temperature, I have a bar graph that uh, it goes across the screen. So basically the hotter it gets, 
the longer the bar graph line gets to right to the end. Now I just did this basic so you guys could follow along and you could adjust the bar graph to whatever you want. If you don't want a bar graph, you can just uh, delete all that and it will work fine. And as for the maximum temperature, the maximum temperature is only on when the actual gauge is on. As soon as you turn it off, it resets back to a zero again. And so this just goes through the maximum temperature and it pretty much just displays whatever that temperature is as long as the gauge is on. And then one more thing is the warning light. And again, this could be the buzzer and this is part of the system too. So the LED pin will go high when you're over the threshold. And then when it goes under the threshold, the LED pin goes low. Now, if you want having addressing problems with your sensor, you can just um, take out the double lines here and you can see on a serial screen, a serial monitor, what the actual address is and so you can all sort it out. And that's the program. So I'll put that down below and you can just cut and paste that into Arduino and upload it to your Arduino. So just sitting here in the driveway with the lights on and you can see my other two cages and then you can see the new one that we just built. It lights up pretty good, very visible at night. Awesome.